that's one of the coolest things that's ever been on this channel. <laughs> that is exactly the type of music that this, I think, is really Yeah, it works really well. Wow. Gothic Cathedral. Man. Hey, everybody. Um, we're here at the University of Chicago at the Carillon. I'm here with Joey Brink. Joey, thank you so much for letting us be here. What is this? This is the Carillon at Rockefeller Chapel at the University mm -hmm. of Chicago. This is the second biggest Carillon in the world out of about 600. We've got a massive yeah. instrument here with 72 bells, 100 tons of bronze. As you know from climbing up the tower just now, it's pretty fun to explore yeah. these towers. And so do you guys want me to give you like a tour as we go up? Chapel's 1928, Rockefeller Chapel, mm -hmm. given by Rockefeller Sr. It's the Rockefeller we're familiar with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's that Rockefeller. It's not some other guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> bells in the tower came four years after the building was finished in 1932. So we're gonna climb a spiral staircase um, just behind the organ pipes here and enter the attic of the chapel uh, and walk on a, on a catwalk above the ceiling. Yes, please. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. You have to wash your heads, <laughs> otherwise you'll hit your head. Oh man, I'm having a flashback <clears throat> yeah. from the pipe organ, because we did the pipe organ recently. And I saw it, And yeah. I told you we learned about this place from comments in the pipe organ. So cool. thanks for that, whoever mentioned awesome. this. They're like, that's not the only gigantic <laughs> instrument in Chicago. Sweet. I love that. That's a key fob, too. Oh, yeah. There are 271 steps in total. We made sure to bring water, too. Yeah. I'm already sweaty. Oh, my God. Rest it here. Y'all catch our breaths. <laughs> what percentage of the way would you say we are? Less than half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hurts. What are we looking at here? What is this? This is the ceiling of the chapel. It's made of tile and cement and a few bricks. It's original. Yeah, 1928. This way to the top. <laughs> yeah. Watch your heads, everybody. This is so cool. Yeah. So this is your commute to work. Yeah. That's how I get to my office. <laughs> what are we looking at? Yeah. This is the mechanical room of the tower, where we have a couple of mechanisms that can play the bells automatically. And every hour, it triggers from a computer, and then the compressed air gives the power to pull these rods that play the bell. And this is just attached to a computer somewhere and it's just yeah. sending a MIDI information to yeah. play every hour? Not even MIDI, it's just sending electrical signals to these valves here. Like it always plays the same thing every hour and these right. are the notes that are in that song, so you just have those here to be automatic? Yeah, exactly. So we play the Westminster chime before every hour strike. Bum, dun, dun. bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. It's only four notes actually. Okay. Well, this can play nine. So we're not using the full capability. Oh, so there's some of these that are set up here they just <laughs> we don't ever use. Them. Yeah, this is uh, not something I normally do, but this is live electronics. <laughs> so if I touch it, I'm gonna get shocked. Okay. That's why I have this box, <laughs> insulating material. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so All right, I can okay, play please. a bell by doing this. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Dude, which, which one are you gonna touch? I, I'll touch this one again. Ready? Yep. Yeah. And then that is connected to that guy, and somewhere yep. way up there is this gigantic bell. Yeah. And this is the original clock. Oh. So this is what controlled the hour chime when it was installed in 1932. This is like a music box, this wheel right here. So wow. the whole yeah. time designates the programming for the chime. Oh, whoa. Yeah, so you can see the holes there, are, you know, they're not lined up. They're, uh -huh. they're arranged in a musical notation, basically. Yeah, it's just like a really big music box. Yeah. Totally. And if you want to change the song, you got to get a new change big, wheel. huge wheel. Yeah. It's a clock yeah. with no clock face. Yeah. Which is actually how clocks were originally conceived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This metal cage is a motor that controls the biggest bell. And when this spins, this pulls a rope, and this rope goes up to the ceiling to strike the biggest bell on the hour. And as that spins a full rotation, it releases this lever right here. And that lever then um, sends the rope up and there's a clapper that falls to strike the bell. You play the biggest bells automatically or manually. Okay. So what is the biggest bell called? And do you, do you use that musically or is this yeah, for- Yeah, use it musically. Yeah. Uh, we call the bell Big Laura. Because Big it Laura? Because Laura Spellman Rockefeller's name on oh. it. <laughs> and we'll Big see Laura. her in a minute. She's right yeah. above us actually. How heavy is Big Laura? 18 and a half tons. 18 and a half tons. So 37,000 pounds. She's the third biggest tuned bell in the world. There's only two Whoa. bigger tuned bells, yeah. Wow. One's in New York, one's in London. In Carlisle? What's that? Are they in Carlisle? 
Um, one is. The one in New York is okay. the biggest Carillon in the world, and we're at the second biggest Carillon in the world. Is only Big Laura named, or do you have names for all 72? No. Is there a whole family? <laughs> <laughs> we have one other bell that's uh, colloquially named Big Ben. Big Ben. Because it's roughly the same size as the biggest bell at Big Ben. Okay. That's the second biggest bell. And that bell weighs 13 tons. What do Ben and Laura play when they play together? So, are, they, why, are they friends? Like, they, what chord is it? They, they play a major second when you put them together. You normally don't play them together. <laughs> so they're not friends. Not really. They, they get, yeah, Laura and Ben are not, yeah. they don't work well together. Overtones on lower bells. You don't usually want to play two low bells right next to each other yeah, at the same time. Yeah, of course. Of course. They just, overtones just. Oh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Oh, that. It's so big, it's hard to find. <laughs> I thought it was just some piece of machinery. It is, but it's a massive piece of machinery. Yeah. I can see Laura Spellman Rockefeller. Yeah. Cast in 1931 in England, brought it over on a boat, hauled up the side of the tower on a crane, and brought in through the side of the tower here. They had to take out one of these walls to bring the bells in, into place. Big Laura right in front of us can be played in three ways. There's the, the motor that we saw downstairs, and that when the motor plays, it's moving this hammer on the right side there. That big wheel strikes and falls on the bell from the side. There's another one of those hammers on the left here. Looks identical. And that has a wire attached to it going up and then another wire going over and then up higher in the tower. And that is attached to the keyboard so I can play the bell manually. Yeah. And there's a third clapper in the middle of the bell oh, yeah. that hangs underneath. And that clapper strikes the bell when it swings. You can see the bell mounted on these big wheels. Uh -huh. These wheels are attached to motors that cause the bell to swing back and forth. And then the clapper swings freely with gravity and strikes the bell. How loud is this? Incredibly loud. When we play the bells on the side, you could be standing here without ear protection and you'd be okay. Really? When the bells are swinging, you need ear protection. Yeah, like yeah. this would be a death sentence for your ears if yeah. you were standing here while this was being played. Of the 72 bells, only five can swing in the swinging peel. Nine are automatic and 72 are manual. How many bells are here? And these are the, these are the largest these bells. These are the largest bells, yeah. yeah. So there's 14 bells altogether right here. Uh, and there's another 58 bells that are still higher up. What's the range of the instrument? This plays a C sharp, a low C sharp. So and two C, C sharps C -sharp below one, middle C. C sharp two, oh, two, two below. And then the highest note is a, also a C sharp and it's six octaves in total instrument. <laughs> we don't have our... Yeah, I didn't yeah, realize we, we were doing the full tour. Right yeah, now. we should have brought the lights. Wow. This is Big Ben? This is Big Ben, yeah. This is our second biggest bell at 13 tons. And this clapper right here is the Carillon clapper. So this is how we play the bell manually. It doesn't swing this way. It won't, Good, it won't I'm swing. glad. <laughs> Normally I don't play it like this, but I can play it right now as a demonstration. You can touch the bell and feel it vibrate. And if you run your fingers on the inside edge here, you actually can feel the ridges. Yeah. That's how they tune the bell. They shave metal off the inside to tune the pitch. So for the biggest bell, they shaved off 3,000 pounds of metal just to tune it. <laughs> and bells are tuned when they're made, so this bell's never been retuned. Retuning this, I mean, would just be impossible, right? It's impossible until you take it out of the tower and then put it on a lathe, which happens, but never, really? not, not to this bell. What causes it to get out of tune? Repeated striking. Every time we strike it, a little bit of metal comes off. You can see some markings where the strike point is. There's a former strike point over here, so you can see where that, oh, that bell yeah. is struck. Yeah. So you just rotate the bell? You can rotate bells or rotate the clapper strike point. There are two places on the bell where you prefer to strike the bell. There's two nodes or anti-nodes where you'd like to strike the bell. You're replacing clappers okay. rather than rotating the bell because you want to strike the bell at the point where it's going to resonate the best. Yeah, can I push play it? it? Yeah, totally. The most intense down. C sharp of my life. <laughs> well, this is a D sharp. This is, okay, it's the yeah. most intense D sharp of my life. <laughs> Weezer tuning, Slayer tuning, D sharp standard. expecting, but it's really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> There's the mechanized yeah, thing. Yeah. So do any of these chime on the hour? Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs>
<laughs> good timing. This thing is so fing <laughs> long. Is this bigger big than the pipe organ? It depends on how you define it. Yeah, so, right? Right. Heavier? Hey, yeah. Yeah. Not as many notes. This tower's not as big as that church. Right. But the but... tower's pretty big, so who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Is there like a comp This one's taller, though. Yeah, it's taller. <laughs> so we're the biggest instrument. Yeah. <laughs> Being in here while it's playing is it's yeah. a little frightening, it's honestly. It's very frightening. It's very frightening when it catches you by surprise. Like yeah, because this one's just right next to my head. These louvers, these windows actually direct the sound down. Oh, okay. So they're I'm designed feeling... to bring the this sound down. This is really You can kind of see the whole room. This is amazing. It surely is, man. If I just like mess up my footing a little bit, like. There, that's a long way down. It'd be a musical fall down. Depending on what bells are directly underneath me. This is the scaredest I've ever been learning about an instrument. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got like a little apartment over here. Yeah, this is my house. You have a little house in the sky. <laughs> that's right. Whoa, this is nice. Yeah, right? This is really nice. Oh, there's Aaron here, you man. You got a whole studio up here. That's right. <laughs> Recording studio. You got a gift shop? <laughs> you got a gift shop up here. That's right. You want some merch? This is maybe the coolest studio I've been in. This is the playing cabin, is what we call it. I like to call it my office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the keyboard. How mm -hmm. high up are we? How, how many stories? I don't know how to measure in stories. The tower is 207 feet high and we're almost at the top, so yeah. probably 175 feet up. I love how immediately around this little building too, it does look like you would expect at the top of a uh -huh. church. Yeah. And then you have this. <laughs> yeah. This. Yeah. <laughs> and you have, oh, what? <laughs> we gotta get all set up, we gotta get relit. Can I just hit one before? Up to you. Is this the C sharp of my yeah, dreams? Yeah, the lowest pedal. On the keyboard, it's actually an F. So everything's moved over a, a step? A major third. What? Yeah. Every carillon transposes differently. Bigger bells are more impressive. So Rockefeller wanted big bells. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a low C sharp. Well, they, they did it. I mean, None of the repertoire that's written for carillon includes a low C sharp, because that bell is out of the range of normal carillons. And so rather than put an actual C sharp on the keyboard that nobody would play, they instead made, made it an F. So is everything is repertoire. played tuned down. Yep, on this carillon. That's really metal. <laughs> that, that, so, that this whole thing is down tuned. So this is the biggest one. Yep. Hit it hard. Okay. Yes, hard? Hit it hard. Yeah, sure. Really hard. Yeah. What if what if I hit it so hard that it breaks? And... Actually, that can't happen. Don't like. <laughs> don't do this. Because <laughs> this is like. So put your phone on it. If I do then... this, this is like a billion dollars in damage. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Put your phone on it and then accelerate really fast. Oh, you really got to hit it. Yeah. I barely hit it at all. Okay. Oh, you had a good another... strike. That's good. Oh, it did. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That is so cool. Okay, I'm doing it again. And the whole neighborhood is hearing this. Yeah, right. Everybody else talking to me. And now. great, Rob. Now everyone thinks it's three o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You're right. <laughs> no, that's like, it's real. How far can you hear this? I've heard the hour strike as far as a mile and a half away. The swinging bells, two miles. So I, I really did just tell people an hour away that it's three o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well now it's four. <laughs> <laughs> All Chicago businesses are out. <laughs> yeah, this is like the worst possible stage fright ever. But at the same it's time, like, you're anonymous. Nobody knows it's you. Yeah. So it's the most yeah, public yeah. yet anonymous instrument. Yeah, I guess you're place. right. If we're gonna go up to see the bells up there. That's almost as cool as what we just did downstairs, but different. Is there anything I should be worried about as far as falling to my death anywhere? Well, not yet, but we're we're gonna climb a ladder. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Take the camera from you. Yeah. So it's debate on whether or not this is the largest instrument on the channel. <laughs> but we can open up the that. The most dangerous for sure. <laughs> but now we're on the roof. Roof of that house. So this is most of the instrument right here. Yeah. This is most 58. of the bells, most of the notes are right. 58 here. bells, yeah. Is that the smallest one? On the left there. On the oh, there? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Could you put it on your feet to show what we're standing on? Oh, yeah. We're just standing on the scaffolding. Mm-hmm. As the year 1929. So the bells were cast between 1929 and 1931, mm -hmm. and then installed in the tower in 1932. And the clapper is designed to be a softer material than the bell, uh -huh. so the clapper will wear out instead faster of the than bell. the bell. And then yeah. you can replace those instead of replacing exactly. the whole bell. You just as rotate the clapper, which... actually, yeah. Oh, okay. So this is how many steps we've gone up. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> so many stories were up. The music that I play and that we play as Carolineers is for the whole neighborhood and for the whole community. Mm-hmm. We're hiring you for the best job of the day, yeah, which is just to go somewhere and sit silently in a field with a microphone. Uh, it's not, not too hard. I think I can do it, you know? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like when you mic a drum set and you have to like mic the room, right? Yeah. And this is like the most extreme version of that. Right. In order to get the like room sound, you need to go like a quarter mile away. Exactly. It's really hard to film in here because it just takes so long to get here. <laughs> now we made Kyle's back. <laughs> Hose me down. <laughs> Did you say there were waters in this vicinity? Yeah, we got some water bottles here. <laughs> Should the air still on in here or? <laughs> Keeps you in shape being a Carillon player. Yeah, exactly. When you have to climb a mountain to just get to your instrument. <laughs> All right, are we good? Yep, go Good on. and roll? Awesome. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Joey Brink. Yeah. What are we looking at here? So yeah, this is the Carillon at Rockefeller Chapel at the University mm-hmm. of Chicago. This is the second biggest Carillon in the world out of about 600. So we've got a massive yeah. instrument here with 72 bells, 100 tons of bronze. Each of these keys plays a bell. It looks like a piano keyboard. It's a keyboard instrument. But rather than play with fingers, we play with our fists. Yeah. And there's <laughs> with one bell for each key. If I move a key with my fist here, and I'm physically moving a yeah. wire and that wire goes up to a clapper that moves to strike a bell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can play that bell just by hitting the key with my fist like that. And because everything here is mechanical, I can have complete control over the sound. So I can play really softly by just gently tapping mm-hmm. the key, or I can play really loud by hitting it harder. Yeah. And the whole neighborhood is hearing you right now. Yeah, exactly. Jeez. Yeah. And so we play with two fists. We also play with feet, and there's a yeah. pedal board down here. And I just figured, I didn't want to look into it because I wanted to learn on camera, but I, I just figured that you couldn't really play this and like harmonize and do chords, I would figure that you yeah. can only play like one note at a time. I can easily play two notes, just like that. Uh-huh. I can also open up my hand and, and play a chord with just one hand, so I could play four notes mm-hmm. at once. I could play whole clusters. Yeah. And then if I add my feet, my feet can each play a bell. So I can play, play a whole chord. You said there's 72 bells. Yeah. And each one of those is one of those bells. And so you said six octaves. Yeah, right. And these down here are just another way to hit the same notes. Because if I'm hitting, exactly. if I'm moving my foot here. Yeah. So all the bells are playable from yeah. manual, except for the biggest one, which is only in the low pedal. Uh huh. I play that low bell. There's no actual manual key. Yeah. But every other bell, the second biggest bell, uh-huh. is right here. As we go up the pedal board, we're duplicating the lower two octaves of the mm-hmm. instrument. Yeah. So my hands are usually in the upper couple of octaves. Yeah. And then my feet are playing the lowest octave. Yeah, the, the lower bells here are much heavier. The bells are bigger, and so the keys are heavier to play. It takes a lot more power to move these low bells with my fists, which is why I play them with my feet. Yeah. My feet have more power. And then do you stand up on it a little bit for it? Or is it possible for if you really hit this to break the bell? You won't break a bell. You won't, okay. We, we sometimes will break the mechanism. A wire will break. <laughs> the bells are gonna be okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We hit this thing pretty hard sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> so you're playing like we're playing with fists traditionally, it's, it's, but yeah. we do play with fingers also. And that's more of a maybe more of a contemporary ones. technique, or even in the low ones, but if I want to play really softly, maybe I'll play with fingers. It's so <laughs> interesting too that you're playing, like you're hitting it way down here. As Carolineers, we learn how to prepare notes, meaning mm-hmm. take the keys most of the way down before we strike them. Mm-hmm. This gives us more control. The key fall here is pretty large. For me to start playing the note at the top of the key, I can play it loud. Yeah. But if I want to play it soft, I really have to get low mm-hmm. and then play it. So if I'm playing this repeated gesture, I can play it really quietly by keeping those keys low. Am I good to play something on it? Go for it, yeah. I'm so used to doing this. Yeah. So try to try to take your hands into fists. Like this? Yep. And then if you want to play a chord, open up into a claw. So you get one note with a thumb and one note with your other four fingers. Okay. So if I'm playing a C. A C like... chord like that. Yeah. And rather than hold the notes down, you want to get off. Mm. <clears throat> you can come oh, back because it's against position. the bell. Right, you don't want to hold the hammer against the bell. Oh, of course. Yeah. I'm so used to, you know, of course, with the keyboard, to you want the note to stay, you hold it down. Exactly. But obviously here, you don't want that. Yeah. If I hold a note down, and this wire is adjusted a little bit tighter, you can hear it crunch. Oh, yeah. 
And so we don't want to yeah. do that. Uh huh. And yeah. that's probably not good for the bell too. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. That does certainly sound like you do have to compose specifically for this instrument because of some of its, like like you said, if you hit a low note, you better you better know that yeah. you want it to be there for the next forty seconds. Exactly. Yeah. So you have to write around that. Yeah. And you're using, I see you're using your pinkies? <clears throat> yeah, we strike the key with our pinkies. So with a closed fist, but mm -hmm. it's the pinky that really strikes. That's how we get the most control. Wow. Yeah. What do these do? We have a few buttons up here. Yeah, so these buttons actually don't do anything. Oh, okay. When the instrument was built, it was the largest carillon ever built uh -huh. by a, a very large margin. And the bell founders thought we might need some electrical assistance for the biggest bells mm -hmm. because they're so heavy to play. Yeah. Um, however, to my knowledge, they were never installed. The buttons are oh, here. Oh, so these the have mechanism... never been used. Yeah, which is good because carillons should only be mechanical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't come up here and this practice that. You need. Yeah, right. We have to practice on separate instruments. Uh -huh. So we've got practice carillons in the basement of the building that play electronic sounds. And they look like this. They're carillon keyboards, but they just play mm -hmm. in the room that we're practicing in. Yeah. Yeah, and those are so necessary <laughs> to <laughs> yeah. practice, yeah. to learn, to teach, uh -huh. to compose. Because, like, yeah. when can you even play it? Like, what are your. When do you play this? Yeah, twice a day at yeah. noon and five for an hour each time. Noon and five for an hour. But every time we play, it's a performance. Mm -hmm, Everybody can hear it. Yeah. So we don't want to be making a lot of mistakes or trying things out for the first time if we can help it. So you need to practice one. I was practicing at home because there was two songs I would love to have played on this. But and I was trying to play the organ like this yeah. <laughs> that I have to try to get muscle memory. But this now being here, this is so much different. You I don't play feel it? confident at all. <laughs> 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 That's a great thing to say right before playing it. And yes, I do want to play it. Okay, you very should, badly. You just say here. Okay. And I'm gonna show you where middle C is. So it's not the middle of the keyboard, but it's actually this one. This one's middle C. That's your middle C. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, I if I'm looking at a keyboard, it's like I just go to this one, go one to the left. But now with yep. it like protruding like these these hammers, it's 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 harder to tell. Yeah. Also, from back here, especially when you're playing really really loudly, there's so much just clank of the machinery as well. Yeah. It's like for us, like almost as loud as the bells. Yeah, that's something that I tune out entirely. I don't mm -hmm. notice it at all. Because yeah, outside, nice. when you're listening to the carol, and you only hear the bells. Yeah, of course, not, you don't hear any of this. this. Right. Well, I'm yeah. just play a chord. This is like a C chord. Nice. All right. <laughs> That's a tough one. Yeah. People would be very, very mad at me if we didn't play for whom the bell tolls. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you the bass line. It's just two notes. Sure. Okay. Has anyone ever played Metallica on this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Not got, the first um, time. I've got Enter Sandman in my, in my repertoire. Oh, nice. <laughs> let me, let me. <laughs> <laughs> this is so confusing. <laughs> oh, hold on. I can play it on a bass guitar great. Yeah. I, I promise. <laughs> I swear, I've played instruments before. Things on bells often sound a little bit different than what you're expecting. Yeah, yeah. Bells have minor third overtones. Yeah, they were they. But when you play a bell, you're hearing a whole minor chord in that bell, uh, or a whole diminished chord actually. Yeah. Because of the minor third overtones. All right, ready? Yep. Let's do it. That's on. <laughs> 100 tons of bronze. Yeah, 100 tons of bronze. Yeah. So when were these first built? When were these invented? Carillons go back about 500 years to the year 1510 is when we mm -hmm. consider the first carillon to be built. And the evolution of the carillon really parallels the evolution of the clock. The clocks were originally signaling bells rather than uh, clock faces. Really? And so as clocks became more elaborate, then there were more bells and towers, and you started to have bells announcing the hour strike playing That's a melody before the hour strike to get people's attention. Because if you just hear the hour strike, maybe you missed the first couple, you don't know what time it is. But if you hear a melody signal that the hour and then you hear the hour strike, then you know what time it is. And as cities grew and the towers started to compete with each other, you'd get bigger bells, better bells, 
more bells, better players, and it became a kind of a competition between cities who could play more on their carillon, on their instrument. Wow. So 1510 was the first year where there was a keyboard connected to the bells. And it wasn't until the 20th century that carillons were really concert instruments. Before that, they were really signaling mechanisms. Uh -huh. And then in the early 20th century in Belgium, which is where the carillon originated, people started to play more musically and play actual concerts with actual music. So all of our music written for the instrument is only from the 20th century and 21st century. How did you find the... I, I started playing the carillon in college at Yale University. I toured the campus as a high school student. The tour guide pointed out the carillon tower and said mm -hmm. there's people up there that play bells. Mm -hmm. And for some reason that fascinated me and I just needed to get up there and yeah. do it. And it was a hobby for a long time. I was an engineering student and then a grad student, but I eventually left that engineering career behind to just play the carillon. It's the most requested piece you get. Yeah. Harry Potter. Oh, sure. Of course. Yeah. And Game <laughs> of, of Thrones. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can pull those out if you want. Yeah, I'll serenade you while you're getting it. That's one of the coolest things that's ever been on this channel. <laughs> that is exactly the type of music that this, I think, is really Yeah, it works really well. Wow. Gothic Cathedral. Man. The other most commonly requested song is Game of Thrones. that you're able to do those quick movements through the, key, the keys. Are these called keys? Yeah, we call them keys, keys? or batons, yeah. Yeah, we like to roll chords, mm -hmm. just like that. Yeah. From the, top to, from the bottom to the top. Usually, yeah, two notes in each hand, sometimes more. It's kind of tricky, yeah. Yeah, It's it easier is. to go up mm -hmm. than to go down. The trick is to keep the notes really well prepared, mm -hmm. really low, yeah. so that you're only tapping them a little bit. It's also very strange to be playing underneath the keys. Yeah, you get your hands underneath yeah. the keys to control them. Yeah. Nice. Ooh, that All was a good right. one. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. All right. Solid. <laughs> we also can roll more notes. <laughs> yeah. I have to double check. Play that melody in the other octaves. Yeah. One, two, three, four.
<laughs> it was just a long ending. I was yeah. getting to that note eventually. <laughs> Oh, that was great. I like that. Yeah, I really love that. I didn't think that we would be like jamming on this today. Yeah, hey, it's awesome. Well, from, from up here, I had to be really careful because if I'm looking straight down, it's a keyboard. It's like, yeah. I know it's a keyboard, but then I'm like this and I'm just, you know. Yeah, yeah, looking at, at an angle, it's pretty hard to tell which uh -huh. note is which because your just, keys don't line up as well. It felt like I was almost like drumming, you know? Like totally. This, wow, that was so cool. Yeah, we gotta write more music. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> one song in the bank right there. Yeah. Do we have my sheet, the sheet music's in the... Yeah, pull it out. I didn't think that this instrument would be as capable as it, as it is. Yeah, people don't I, expect that. Yeah. All right, some of these are really... What I wanted to do on the pipe organ, other comments of similar videos are like, you gotta play rain. Yeah, is rain so, in here? Yes. Do you think you could make it through, like... I think I could just try playing it. You, you let me know when to, when to move, turn the pages. <laughs> yeah. It's not a very long song. No, yeah. I heard it on YouTube. I love it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Everyone rolling? Rolling. All right. Uh, rolling. Okay. It's so amazing that this song is being played here, seriously. Awesome. Like, I want to ask you for a copy of the music so I can just play <laughs> it more often. got it. Really? The copy of this book? You mean the ones that are available on dftva.com? <laughs> <laughs> you sent me right up for the plug. So, right? <laughs> Thank you so, yeah, so much for That's letting us be here and be on the channel. Um, if you would like to hear Joey play. Yeah, uh, we play twice a day, most days a week. You can come down to Rockefeller Chapel. Mm -hmm. We give tours of the tower nine times a week, Tuesday through Friday and Sundays. Concerts all the time. And if you're not in Chicago, go check out a carillon near you. There's 600 of these around the world and there's new carillons being built all the time. Right on. All right, thanks again. Uh, subscribe if you like. I'm sure this isn't the last time we do something like this. Here's a playlist of a bunch of the other videos we've done like this. And have a good one.